Thank you everyone for joining this interactive webinar related to understanding the best techniques that you need to follow for you to study and pass the CFE exam. Today, we are gonna share with you so many techniques related to this CFE exam, related to your psychology when you are taking the exam, related to what you need to do before taking the exam, and the techniques you need to follow it while you are taking the exam. But first, let me introduce myself. I work uh, as a CFE exam uh, uh, review authorized trainer uh, with Open Thinking, and I'm the managing director of Open Thinking for the last six years. We have so far so many delegates who took our class and passed the exam with us. And always we're focusing on making them understand the concept. It's all about, before you think about getting a certificate and saying, so happy I'm certified for the examiner, it's about how can you understand this concept for you to be able to apply it in real life. For me, it's more important for you to know this knowledge and pass the exam saying you are qualified for the examiner rather than giving you the secrets of the exam and then you actually pass the exam. But when you handle an actual investigation, you don't know what you are doing in reality. So the first thing, when you are going to conduct fraud examination, you need to understand that fraud examination is not science. Fraud examinations, it's practical techniques created by the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners to help you understand how can you resolve allegation of fraud from inception to this position. From the minute that we hear there's a fraud case related to a tip we got or a complaint we have received or accounting clue we have uncovered to actually at the end be able to recover our money. So it's all about understanding how can you do the documentation of the evidence, understanding how can you conduct the interviewing of the witnesses, figuring out exactly how can you write the investigation report, testifying to the finding, and finally helping the organization in implementing the right internal controls to prevent fraud from happening in the future. So this is what we cover in the fraud examination field. Now for you to be a certified fraud examiner, you need to have certain skills. So one of the skills that you need to have, you need to have the same skills that a lawyer have. The meaning you need, you don't need to be a lawyer, but you need to be able to understand how can we handle the fraud case in the legal court? How can we address the issue legally? For example, if someone is giving a bribe to someone in a business, do we call this bribery? The answer, no, we call this commercial bribery because bribery is more like if, or official bribery if you are giving it to a government, but when you are giving it to a business, commercial bribery. This is why, what if uh, one uh, guy is giving a bribe to his friend to facilitate something for him? We consider this is a bribe or conflict of interest. This is why we need to understand when we are dealing with a situation, what are the legal elements related to fraud? How can we handle fraud cases in the common law and in the civil law? How can we handle civil cases and criminal cases related to fraud? So these are the issues that you need to uncover for you when you are handling cases related to fraud. So this is the first thing that you need to gain as a fraud examiner. The second thing that you need to gain as a fraud examiner is what? Is being able to understand actually uh, the accounting issues. You don't need to be an accountant, but you need to have the same understanding of an accountant. How can we look at the manipulation in the financial reporting? How can we ensure no one is manipulating the billing process? No one is manipulating the payroll. No one is manipulating the uh, uh, purchase, uh, purchase orders inside the organization. We need to look at all the financial transactions and the financial operation to ensure that all the financial fraud is controlled inside the organization. Also, as a fraud examiner, you need to have the investigation technique. You don't need to be an investigator. You don't need to actually conduct the investigation, but you need to have these techniques that investigators they have related to how can we collect the right evidence for us to support our conclusions, related to understanding how can we document this evidence in the proper way to use it later in court, understanding how can we analyze this evidence, and later how can we actually write the fraud examination report and testify to these findings in court. So all these elements are very important and we need to understand them properly for us to be able to conduct the right fraud examination. Finally, you need to have the knowledge related to the science of crime, criminology. You need to understand the human behavior. The meaning after we uncover the fraud, how can we go to the organization to have the right anti-fraud strategy, to implement the preventive and deductive control, to ensure that in the future we can do risk management related to the fraud and ensure we have the proper ethics and compliance program so fraud will not happen in the future. So these are very important skills also you need to have. 
So based on our discussion that fraud examiners need to have all these skills, the ACFE, the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, had created a very interesting certificate, which is the gold standard in fraud examination, and this certificate called Certified Fraud Examiner. This certificate will help you understand exactly all the main concepts that you need to have for you to be able to conduct effective fraud examination to uncover fraud and investigate fraud. So when we are speaking about the CFE, the CFE is actually four sections. Every section is two hour exam. So we have section related to fraud prevention, we have deduction, we have section related to financial transaction, we have one section related to fraud investigation and we have one section related to the legal elements of fraud. So each one of these sections is two hour exam, 100 questions, multiple choice and true and false. You need to actually take it online. All the uh, questions are online. However, ACFE will monitor your exam using a camera and at the same time will monitor your screen while you are taking the exam. But you can take the exam online. You don't need to go to any testing center and you can take it anytime, anywhere you want on your laptop. So this, these are the four sections of the CFE exam. We are gonna go later and see what are the areas that covered under all these sections. So that way you have an understanding of the outline of the course. These are the issues that we cover in the fraud examination course. The investigation technique covering issues related to planning the investigation, understanding the interview theory and application, figuring out how can you do data analysis, understanding how can we analyze the document, looking at tracing the transaction, figuring out how can you do the right reporting, what kind of source of information you can use to collect the information, and how can you conduct effective computer forensic and doing cover examination. Then we go to other issues related to fraud prevention and deterrence, related to understanding human behavior, what is the, the uh, uh, crimes that white color can do, understanding the corporate governance, the management and auditor responsibility related to fraud, figuring out the fraud prevention programs that you need to have in place, what kind of ethics and what kind of fraud risk assessment and management you need to have to, in place to ensure fraud will not happen. Now, the third section is related to law related to fraud figuring out from the US legal element, what are the issues we need to address? So we focus in the class because it's an international class, we speak about the legal system in US in common law as well as in civil law. So it's covering all the aspects, figuring out the legal elements of the employees, what are the criminal prosecution of fraud that we need to look at when someone is conducting fraud, what kind of evidence we need to collect it legally for us to be used in court, and what are the laws related to fraud, figuring out how can you testify as an expert witness in your fraud case and how can you handle civil cases related to fraud. Also cover other issues related to security fraud, money laundering, bankruptcy fraud, and tax fraud. So these are also the other issues that are covered in the exam. Now, finally, the final section is related to financial transaction and uh, fraud schemes, which is covering areas related to cash receipt, the th uh, theft of intellectual property, uh, consumer fraud, identity theft, uh, fraudulent disbursement, a check and credit card fraud, accounting concept, figuring out exactly what is the computer and internet fraud, the bribery, corruption, all these kinds of financial institution fraud, healthcare and insurance fraud. So you can see the knowledge that you are gonna gain by becoming certified fraud examiner. If you just see the fraud manual, it's 2000, more than 2000 pages that you need to actually go and study over six months for you to be able to qualify and pass the CFE exam. It's not something that's easy, but at the end, when you are gonna say to someone, I am certified fraud examiner, I hold that certificate, they know that you have all the knowledge needed for you to carry out investigation, and that's what's important. So the laws that are covered in the examination is focusing on international law. So they speak about the law that's happening in US and outside US. So in, in civil law country like UAE and in common law countries like US or UK. So these are the issues covered in the exam. Now, why you should become certified fraud examiners? So many individuals, they call me and they say, uh, yeah, I would like to be certified fraud examiner, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to invest. Remember, it's not cheap. You need to pay membership around $200. You have to pay exam fees around $400. You have to pay for the software around $995. You have to pay for study guide around $300. It's a lot of money around more than $2,000 investment if you are buying everything. So if you decide to go to take that step, 
what is the motive for you? Why you should do it if you are working in compliance or internal audit or fraud examination or risk management? Where there is something very important, the latest survey 2020 by ACFE showed that if you have CFE compared non-CFE, 34% you are gonna earn more. This is in general, but if you have it actually in the Middle East or Africa, 63% you are, are gonna earn higher than your uh, uh, coworkers. So this is where it's really important to understand the value of the certificate. Here in UAE alone, we have more than 1,200 ACFE members. And all of them, they are trying to become certified fraud examiner. And approximately out of, um, we have around, I think, 800 CFEs in UAE. Out of these 800 CFEs, around 600 of them took the class with me and passed the exam with me. So this is where you need to actually go and gain this certificate because so many of my friends who attended my class and they passed the exam, they told me I was able to get a job after. I was able to secure higher compensation from my employer or to find another job or for me to be able to go and open my own firm. And now based on the certificate, I was able to get consulting projects. So the value of the certificate is massive. The amount of demand we are having on the certificate is massive. I'm just conducting a course next week, an online CFE exam review course, and today we, have a, we are close to 100 delegates joining the class. It's a massive demand on this uh, certificate. Why? Because they can see not only you are gonna have higher compensation, but also you are gonna demonstrate to your employer, to even the client that you are working with as a consulting firm, that you have the knowledge and skills for you to be able to pass the exam. So this is the value of the certificate. Now, let's go over the, the study tips. What are the, the nine best study tips that you need to have? And I'm gonna go over them in details. If you follow these nine study tips, you will be able to actually pass the exam with no issue. Tip number one, study from the CFE exam prop course. I have so many individuals who called me, who told me, yet. We have to invest around $900, $995 to buy the CFE exam prep course. That's a lot of money, especially if you are living in certain country in Asia or you are living in some countries in, in Africa that your actually salary is not that much compared to the cost of the class. So you say, yeah, what about if I get the manual, only the manual, and I study from the manual? My answer to them is very simple. ACFE, they have created the CFE prep course for a reason, for you to be able to know the main concept that ACFE, they are going to test you over in the exam. Don't read the manual and spend uh, your time reading 25 pages to discover later that none of what you have read is going to be in the exam. Why? Because ACFE, they are not going to ask about these issues. So by having the CFE exam prep course, that will prepare you to know exactly what are the areas that ACFE is focusing on, will help you and prepare you to understand exactly the main concept that you are gonna get in the exam. Remember, the questions in the exam, which is very important, it's not at all the same questions in the CFE prep course. I have one person who told me, yeah, look, I'm scoring 92 on the uh, uh, practice exam in the CFE prep course. I go take the exam, I score 50, what's wrong? How come I'm scoring here 92 and I'm scoring in the exam 50? I will tell you, the questions in the exam, they are much more difficult than the question in the CFE prep course. And this is why if you don't know this tip, which is number one, that you need to study from the CFE prep course, and you need to know that the questions in the exam are much difficult, you think that, oh, I'm studying CFE prep course and I'm gonna pass the exam. No, the studying from the CFE exam prep course, even if it's very important, it's not enough. You need to actually go and understand the topics by reading the fraud manual. So you need to go back to the fraud manual and the topics that you are studying in the actual CFE prep course, you need to read it in the manual. However, if you register with any courses from the ACFE authorized trainers, you don't have actually to go and read the manual. Why? Because we give you a summary, summarizing for 75 pages only the sections you need to study in the exam. That's it. You don't need to study 2,000 pages, only 75 pages per section summarizing the main concept that you are going to get in the exam. So again, it's your option. You can do self-study and uh, uh, use the CFE prep course, or you can join any of the authorized trainers in the world and you can get the study guide with it, with the course. But without the CFE preparation course, it's so hard for you to pass the exam. 
Someone will say, yeah, I have an idea. What about if my friend will buy the CFE example course and all of us, which is we are seven, eight, we will use the same software and we practice the exam. Do you think we can pass the exam that way we don't have to be a lot of money? Remember, you are dealing with the association of certified fraud examiners. If you are gonna do that, first ACFE may discover that more than one person logging into the system and they will actually deactivate the account. And number two, the questions that you are gonna get in the exam, they are gonna be different than his questions because you didn't buy the CFE prop course and he bought the CFE prop course. So this is why make sure you buy the CFE prop course and study from it. Don't only buy the manual, it's not gonna help you actually pass in the exam. This, this is the, uh, tip number one. Tip number two, focus on the definition of each term you say yeah why 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 you are saying focus on the definition of each term? remember i took the cfe exam so i am familiar of what questions they are asking in the exam because i remember when i took the exam you know from the i passed the exam from the first time but i was studying using the cfe fraud manual and the cfe exam of course i was shocked when i took the exam that more than 50 percent of the questions 50 they are speaking about the terms do you know what's the meaning of sliding do you know what's the meaning of testify uh, expert testimony do you know what's the meaning of this so they are asking you so many questions that true and false related to a term the meaning they say the term of uh, tracing is this true or false the term related to sliding is this true or false so so many of the terms they are going to ask you to verify if you know the meaning of the term and in other questions, they say, which one of the following represent this uh, concept? And then they give you four, four terms. So while you are reading, if you have a red light uh, highlighter and you are highlighting every time you get a term, you see a term, highlight it. And make sure when you are studying, you are understanding every single term you are reading during your study. That will help you at least answer 50% of the question correctly. The CFE exam, different than any exam, different than CIA or CBA. CIA and CIA, CBA, they give you most of the questions. They are, we call it case study. With CFE, 50% of the questions are terms. The rest, they are case study. I will tell you, the rest, they are case study. But here, 50, at least if you secure 50% of the questions, 100%, by knowing the meaning of every term, that will help you secure the rest. Because the rest from your experience, from reading the questions, from understanding, you can answer it properly. But if you go to a question and you don't remember the term, you don't remember, for example, what's the meaning of, of uh, economic extortion? You're like, what is economic extortion? I remember I read it, but I have no idea. Or what's the meaning of uh, 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 placement in money laundering? I remember it was one of the steps, but what, which one? In that way, you will not be able to pass the exam. So the tip, the second tip that I will tell you, focus on every term and understand the definition of every term. Make sure it's clear in your mind. Tip number three, read the study guide uh, uh, or, or the fraud manual. So read the study guide or the fraud manual for each concept that you don't understand. The meaning, if you have the study guide or if you have the fraud manual, go and read it. The meaning, you are answering question the exam. Then you get into a concept related to the compensation related to health insurance. What do you say? I don't know what's the meaning of the compensation. What's the meaning of unbundling? What's the meaning of certain concepts? So what you do in if concept you answered incorrectly in the CFE exam prep course, and you have no idea what is that? What's the meaning of sliding? I have no idea. What's the meaning of uh, skimming? I have no idea. Go back to your study guide if you are uh, registering in any class, or go back to the fraud manual, open it and try to read it, try to understand it. Don't say, oh, the meaning of skimming is this and move on without understanding exactly what they mean by it. Don't try to memorize the questions. The questions in the exam are different. So try to understand every single concept by going to the fraud manual, going and reading it so you understand why the question was right or wrong when you answer. So this is very important. Most of the question, the CFE exam, that they are not focusing on terms, they focus on your understanding of the concept because they are gonna give you a scenario. And if you don't have a clear understanding of the concept, you will not be able to answer the scenario uh, properly. Question number four, take the exam in the morning. Now, this tip is a very interesting tip. It's focusing on the psychology. They say, if you are studying the whole day, your mind got so much information. So if you decide to come and take the exam at night, currently your brain is exhausted and the information are scattered in your brain. 
So what you need to do, if you really want to take the exam, the best way is to do, study the whole day, sleep, then wake up in the morning next day and take the exam. In that case, they say, based on in our you know, uh, biology, what will happen? Our brain will go take all the information, filter all the information, or archive it in our brain, and at the same time, our brain is rested. When we wake up in the morning, our mind is clear. Don't get coffee before taking the exam because you will be nervous. You're already nervous with the question. So we don't want to increase your sugar level. We don't want to increase your stress level. So try to wake up in the morning. Try to get a, a green apple juice. Green apple juice will give you the same effect as coffee, but will refresh you. And then you can take the exam in the morning. Never take the exam in the afternoon or at night. You are already mentally and physically exhausted. So that's very important. At least that will help you. In when you are reading the question, you can feel the question is clear. You don't feel the question is confusing. You don't have this cloud thinking around your head when you are taking the exam. Always, this is my recommendation. Exam should be in the morning. I have taken so many certifications, CFE, CIA, CRMA, all the certification. Always, I schedule my exam at 11 a.m. Always. I wake up. I, I don't like to have breakfast because the minute you have breakfast in the morning, the, the blood will flow to your stomach rather than your brain. You don't want to do that. I wake up. I eat something very light. I drink juice, fresh juice. Why? To make my, my body fresh and then go take the exam in the morning. Now I'm relaxed. So this is very important tip for you to take. Tip number five, focus while you are reading the questions. So many delegates, they tell me when I see the questions, uh, suddenly I don't know what happened. One minute, two minutes passed and I didn't understand the question. Always focus on the question. Don't be under the stress. You are taking an exam. So what? What if you don't pass the exam from first time? There is second time and there is third time. Remember, you can take and retake the exam for three times free of charge. So what you need to do when you see the question, read the question clearly. See, is the question saying which of the following except or the question saying which one is incorrect or they are saying which one is not? Make sure you read the question so you don't get excited and say, oh, I understand the question is easy and answer the question wrongly. So reading the question clearly and figuring out what they are asking for is very important. And if you have a very long question and you are saying, oh my God, the question is confusing. I can't understand exactly what they are trying to ask me here. The strategy for you is simple. Rather than reading all the question, go to the end and read the last statement to see what they want. For example, they're saying, which of the following is incorrect? Then read the answers. Most of the time, you don't need to read the whole question because you try to understand what they are answering here. And you say, okay, this is incorrect. It's obvious, well, regardless of the question is incorrect. This is incorrect. Now we have two, two answers. Now based on that, go skim the question, see if you can answer it properly. So focus on the question. Tip number six, review the difficult section first. Some delegates, they told me, Iyad, I decided to start studying investigation. And I say, why you decide to start studying investigation? They say, because investigation is easy. I understand it. I will start with investigation. If you are doing self-study, that's the wrong approach. I'm speaking with individuals who are doing self-study. If you are doing self-study, that's the wrong approach. Why? You study investigation, you are having fun. Then you get to the maybe financial section or the law section. Then you say, oh my God, so difficult. Then you stuck. Remember, at the beginning of any race, like if you are running the marathon, at the beginning, you are happy, you are excited, you have the energy. Later, you get tired. So if you start with the difficult section first, you are going to use all your energy and motivation to address the issues that are difficult and you are going to determine to go over it and understand it. So once the easy part will come like investigation, it will be easy on you. So when I studied CFE, I started by studying the law section, which was the most difficult one. Then I studied investigation. And when I took the exam, I took the law section first, then I took investigation. Why? Because I said, I need to attack the difficult part first. But for us as a human, always we focus on doing the easy task rather than the hard task. Why? Because it's easier. It will make us feel at ease. But if you are taking a study class, it's different. If you take my class or any of the international classes in the world, Always start with the same order like the instructor said. Like for example, in my classes, I start by teaching investigation first. So start with investigation so that way when you are coming to the class, you study in the same order so you have the information already prepared. So decide if you are doing self-study or you are attending the class, what is the right approach that you need to follow? Tip number seven, 
create a summary of the main concepts. I have so many of my students who followed this advice and they were very successful. The meaning when you are studying a manual of 2000 pages, or even when you are studying our summary for 75 pages, take a, a notebook and say, okay, this is important term, write it and write what's the meaning of this term. Okay, okay this is an important concept, write it and write what's the meaning of this concept. By having summary, I did this in all my examination. I always have like a cheat sheet, which is I have four or five pages summarizing everything in the exam. I will use this. When do I use this? I use this one hour before the exam. We call it the one hour sheet. The meaning one hour before the exam, I'm not gonna go read all the material. I just read this sheet, which is summarizing the main concept, the main idea. I read the summary and go to the exam. That will refresh my thinking. And I do this to my students. So when I teach my CFE classes, I do a very interesting technique. And this technique, I learned it recently because it was very helpful. What I do, I deliver the full CFE exam course in half hour, not for the whole sections, for each section. So in half hour, I can go over all the content of the law or financial or investigation in less than 25 minutes. In that case, delegates, because I, my delegates, they take the exam in the morning. So delegates in the morning, they come to the class at 7.30 to 8. They attend this 25 minutes. Now they are fresh. They are ready for the exam. The same thing when I deliver my online courses. When I deliver my online courses, I give them this 25 minutes quick summary. And this is what you need to do if you are doing self-study. If you are doing self-study, you need to create the one hour summary where you go over it for one hour, you go over it for half hour, and then you go take the exam. That will refresh all the ideas in your brain and you'll be able to pass the exam easy with no issue. Tip number eight, manage your time and stress. Some individuals, I don't know why they are shaking when they are taking the exam. You see their face is yellow and you see their stress level is going up to the roof. Sometimes they will get heart attack. Why? It's not the end of the world. You are not actually taking an exam to determine your future career. It's only a simple exam. In case you fail, that doesn't mean you are a failure. That doesn't mean you are stupid. The meaning that you didn't prepare enough. So relax, get your coffee, sit down, and take your exam without all the stress. They say, passing any exam, 35% is your knowledge, and 35% is your stress, and uh, the rest is time management. So you need to make sure you manage your stress. I have taken so many exams, and before I take any exam, I just get the stress out. How I can get the stress out? By saying, I have prepared, I know the knowledge, I, I, I'm, I'm confident that I will be able to answer these questions and there's no issue. And in case I pass the exam, I fail the exam, it's not the end of the world. So I need to relax myself. I should not stress myself because having stress is not gonna make you focus and answer the question correctly. At the same time, management. Don't try to read the questions and spend three minutes in one question. You will not have enough time to answer the rest of the questions. So you need to manage your time properly. You need to, in that case, practice before. When you are answering the question during your answer in the CFE exam review sessions or practice exam, how much time you are taking to answer the question? Is, the, is this time enough? If this time is not enough or you are taking so much time, you need to practice more. I always tell them, you need to answer all the uh, questions in the CFE exam prop course before taking the exam. Someone will say, yeah, but why? I feel, okay, I don't want to answer them all. I say, it's exactly like running a marathon. Do you want to finish a marathon in seven hours or four hours? If you want to finish it in four hours, the meaning you need to practice a lot before. You need to run a lot before. So your muscles are ready. The same thing in our brain. You need to practice all the questions before and try to answer them quickly. So your brain is actually practicing and your muscles are ready inside your brain to be able to answer the questions quickly during the exam. So this is a very important tip. Final tip, believe in yourself and your ability. Remember, you have the knowledge and the experience. You are a manager, auditor, accountant, fraud examiner, and you have so many other certification you have earned. You have a college degree, you have master degree. So have the confidence in yourself. This is why before taking any exam, I go and tell myself. I go and do self-talk. I say, yeah, you are smart, you are qualified, you have earned so many certificates, you have passed so many exams, you can do it. Believing in yourself is more important than anything else. So you need to tell yourself, I can do it, it's possible. 
But if you are negative, you say, oh, I don't think I will pass the exam. The exam is going to be difficult. I don't know if I'm prepared enough. If you will have self-doubt, you will never be able to pass the exam. So you need to be able to trust yourself and your ability. And you know that you have already done your homework and you study and you practice the exam and you uh, uh, are scoring high. You study uh, uh, the manual or you attended the class. So you are ready to pass the exam. So these are the eight you know, best study tips that I can share with you based on my experience teaching the CFE exam review course to more than 1,000 delegates all over the world and uh, you know, uh, uh, conducting more than 50 CFE exam review courses uh, uh, as authorized trainer for ACFE. Now, what we are offering as open thinking, we are actually conducting for the first time online CFE exam review courses due to Corona. Usually we conduct our live courses. But for, this is for the first time we are conducting online CFE exam review courses, similar to what you are in right now. We are doing the different webinars and we are conducting them online. And the way we are conducting this live online training, this is going to happen over four weeks. So usually when we conduct our live classes, we conduct them over four days. However, when we con conduct our online classes, we decided to make sure, because I studied psychology, to make sure you get the information in the right way, we need to give them to you on a smaller dose over a period of time. So the way we are conducting that, we are doing four weeks, every week, three days, every day, two hours. So in that way, you are attending the class easily, studying on your own, and all these sessions are recorded. In case you miss any of these sessions, you can watch these sessions later. You are not gonna lose any of these sessions which is good. Sometimes it's not good for your time zone. Sometimes it's not appropriate for you. So in that way, you can take these uh, uh, courses at a later time. At the same time, we decided to add to that very interesting concept, which is I created 12 videos explaining the main concepts related to fraud examination, that if you watch these videos, you will be able to observe the information that you need to be able to clear any of these terms related to fraud examination. So that will give you the main ideas you need to be able to understand these concepts. Because remember, when we conduct CFE exam review course, our focus is only on understanding. This is the term. This is how the question will come to the exam. This is how we need to address it. You need to focus on this. You need to pay attention to that. So it's focusing. It's like 80, 90% on the exam, not focusing so much on giving you the general knowledge. And I don't like that. I always like to give you the knowledge. So we decided to do the class, the 25 hours of actual CFE exam prep course preparation, plus 12 hours of general knowledge that we will give you to help you understand the main concept you need to know for you to be able to pass the exam. And that's the whole main idea. And at the same time, we have packaged this class in a very nice way where as a part of our class, you will get one year membership, you will get CFE exam application, uh, 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 which is $400 for you to be able to take the exam since it's the exam fees. Uh, we, you will get the CFE uh, exam prop course for you to practice on the questions, the one we were speaking about. We, we will send you the study guide, which is the summary, which is the 75 pages per section summarizing all the concepts in the exam. You will be able to get the CFE flashcard. Uh, so you download them on your I, uh, uh, iPhone or Android, and you will get certificate of attending our class. Plus, you will get the full CFE exam review course as an online course. Now, I know somebody get they say, yeah, but I don't like to attend online. I like to attend live. No issue. Today, under the current situation, we are doing it online. In case you join any of our online classes and you are actually would like to join our live classes, we can give you the option also to join our live classes for additional fees. Or the opposite, if you join our live classes and you would like to join our online classes, we can give you that option. So we are the authorized trainer for ACFE to conduct the courses for all the delegates from UAE, Oman, and Qatar, and Malaysia for us to help you to pass this exam over four weeks. And we have our next course that's happening next week. So in case you would like to join the course, I would be more than happy to share with you additional information. So in that way, we can help you clear that exam within four weeks. How we do it, the process is the following. You attend the class with us within one week. You take the exam over the weekend. Then you attend one week. You take the exam over the weekend. So you take the exam on Friday. In case you fail, you get your result in the same day so you can repeat it again on Saturday. So this is how our approach. Most likely you'll pass the exam from the first time, but in case something happened 
at least you have another chance in the same day or next day for you to go and retake the exam and you'll be able to pass. But at the same time, these videos are all recorded so you can go and watch them anytime you want again for you to be able to review them and to take the exam uh, uh, again. Currently, we have more than 700 delegates pass the CFE exam with us. So we are so happy that we have around between 80 to 85 percent of our delegates, they are passing the exam with us. Someone will say, yeah, what about the another 15 percent? Well, the other 15 percent, either they are not serious about it or either they didn't follow our advice. We tell you, guarantee, if you follow our advice step by step and you do everything we said, you are going to be qualified. And we have conducted so many courses. I have courses from 10 delegates in my class to more than 70, and we have helped them step by step clearing the exam and becoming certified. So this is the main concept. In case uh, you would like to join any of our courses, you can go to openthinking.ae and we can help you in figuring out exactly what is the best approach for uh, registering in the class in case you want to pay by credit card or you want to actually make any uh, installment, we can help you in this process. And I can guide you personally from A to Z until you pass the exam. The minute you join our class, I am behind you. I will not leave you until you are certified. And our objective is not actually to just make you register in the class. Our objective is to give you a lifetime learning. The meaning from the minute you join any of our classes until the rest of your life, I am behind you, giving you free online training, giving you life uh, uh, free training, and giving you so many other the certificate and courses to help you advance in your career until to re uh, for you to reach whatever you know, ambition or whatever goal that you have. So thank you so much for attending this webinars. And now we are going to uh, uh, spend around 20 minutes to get all your questions answered. And we are going to also allow you to take the mic later for you to ask live questions.